Hey Salt and Light family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the channel. For our brand new subscribers, I'm so excited to have you a part of our family. Welcome, welcome. For our returning subscribers, thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing this out into the airwaves and the algorithm of God and uh, helping us do our warfare where there's spiritual wickedness in high places and the Word of God defe defeats the enemy every time and brings breakthrough and deliverance and joy and healing and salvation for everyone that listens to it and receives it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I'm coming to you today. The title of this message is, You Have Hidden Bread, Manna or Money, Be Looking For It. You Have Hidden Bread, Be Looking For It. And this is based on a dream that I had night before last, and the Lord brought this dream to me uh, back to my remembrance today, and he said to do a video and share it with you guys because this is a prophetic word for those of you who this is for and those who will listen to it and receive it. And how you know a prophecy is of God, it not only bears witness with your spirit, it's like, yeah, that's right. But it's also based on something that God has already told you or you've been encouraged by reading the word and he's told you this is going to happen. He always confirms his word through. He says that every word be confirmed through the mouth of two or three witnesses. And any time a word comes forth and it's of God it will, um, to you, it will always come to pass. Now, it doesn't always come to pass right away, but it will come to pass. But the greatest um Thing that you can compare it to is it here in your spirit but it lines up with his word too so um, again you have hidden bread manna or money look for it it's coming so this dream I had a couple of nights ago I had went to the grocery store to get some bread that was on buy one get one free and it's some of my favorite bread it is nature's own multi-green bread and it's cut like brioche and it's it's just a very uh, rich and beautiful bread and there's so many things you can do with it so when I got home that day I put one loaf in the freezer like I always do and I put the other on the counter to use for my sandwiches or you know french toast whatever I want to use it for peanut butter and jelly and I was sitting there thinking, I wish I would have gotten a couple more loaves because that was a really good deal and stuck them up in the freezer. But it was too late to go back to the store. And I said, okay, that's fine. I'll get them next time. So that night I had a dream. And this is what the Lord brought back to me. I had a dream. I just saw my freezer. It was open. And in the very back right-hand corner of my freezer, I saw another loaf of this bread sticking out. And what came to me was there was a hidden loaf of bread in the back of my freezer that I didn't know about. So I guess I had bought four instead of two and had forgotten. And this is the word. I had forgotten I had bread stuck somewhere else. And the Lord showed me the corner of the bread loaf in the freezer. So I woke up and he gave me some scripture references to give to you about this dream. And the first one is Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1. And I was telling my son about this scripture the other night too. Cast your bread upon the waters for after many days you will find it again. That bread you cast on the waters you will find it again. Give portions to seven, yes to eight. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain upon the earth. And the meaning of this, it is saying do not stop by giving to just one person or giving bread to one person, but give to many or anyone in need or everyone that God sends across your path. But just know that God says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So if God wants you to give to someone, he will have bread or seed or money or whatever for you to sow to them. So it is saying, do not stop by giving one person bread, but give it to everyone in need. A person never knows what time he or she will need help themselves. So your giving is not only giving to the kingdom of heaven, of money, of time, of talent, food, clothes, prayer, service, helping people who are sick, helping people who are in need, taking someone to the grocery store or going to the grocery store for them. Just any type of service that you do, the Lord said, when you did it unto the least of these, you did it unto me. And this is what he's telling me. He said, all of you who are listening to this message or it will come across your feed, 
if it bears witness with you, he said, you have been casting your bread upon the waters, some of you for many years, many, many years, you've just sowed every time you, you got a chance, you would give to whatever was, you know, asked for at church, or you would give to someone in the store, or a homeless person, someone experiencing homelessness, you would send to family members, you would buy, you know, when, when the kids were selling cookies to raise money for the band, you always helped. And God said that is a way that you cast your bread upon the waters or your money. And a lot of times when you do that for people, you don't even know how much that encourages them because they might have goals they need to meet. But I think more than anything, it's the fact that someone took the time to listen to them and invest in them. That's, that showed that, you know, God cares about me and people care about me. And the what the Lord is telling me to tell you that you have hidden bread you have money, you have manna that you don't even know you had, and it's coming back to you, and it's it's start it's going to start coming back to you. Kind of like when you see the waves and the flow of the water come up to the ocean and come back. Well, your blessings are about to start to flow into you because you have given and given and given to help so many in need and the poor and the broken. You've encouraged people when you didn't feel like encouraging, but you just saw their pain and you wanted to help them. So that's the best way to not only be a blessing to the kingdom of heaven, but to ensure that God takes care of you and your family besides standing on the word is by giving to others in need. I was always taught if you need healing in your body, Kathy, go pray for somebody that's sick. If you want someone to take care of your mother, you go take care of someone else's mother. It, you know, the Bible says each seed reproduces after its own kind. So whatever seed you sow is the seed you're going to reap in your life. And I was telling my son, I said, you know, you, I, I've seen you over the years. You just have given unsel so unselfishly to so many people and you've helped them move. You've done stuff for them. You've, you've cleared their land. You've mowed their yard. You've helped them with their kids. And I said, now is your time of when you're in, you're in your time of need. You're receiving what you sowed upon the waters years ago. And Psalm 41 one says, blessed is he or she, when it says he, it talks about women and all people. Blessed is he that considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him or her in the time of trouble. To consider the poor is to think about them, to give to their need, to not pass them by when they're holding up a sign or, you know, asking for help, especially when it's those of your own household or your own flesh. When you do that, you are considering and giving to the Lord because Proverbs 19, 7, excuse me, Proverbs 19, 17 says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. Lend to the Lord and God pays back with interest. So think about that. When you go to the bank and you get a loan or you get, heaven forbid, a cash advance, but we've all had to do it from time to time. You get a loan or you get a cash advance or you get a car loan or a mortgage. You have to pay it back with interest. And usually they'll show you after you pay it back in 30 years, this is how much interest you're going to pay. And that's why you want to get it paid off as quick as possible. Well, when you give to the poor or you have pity to the poor, the Lord says you lend to him. So when you lend to God, he's going to pay you back with interest, which is rewards and blessings. And again, he said to tell you that you have hidden bread that you don't know about that's coming back to you. I'm just feeling this rising up in my spirit right now because that was a word he gave me. Kathy, you've got hidden bread, stuff that you have done and you have for, forgotten about and you've prayed for people and you've counseled and ministered. And and um, that's why I tell people, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep going. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing are not doing. God sees everything and he will reward you when the time is right and he will bless you. So um, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, <laughs> I was in another grocery store because I like to go where the sales are and I like to, you know, go where they have unique things. I like unique stuff. And I was actually in Aldi and I had went in there to just get a couple of things that they have that I like 
to bring back home. And I was in line and I pulled out, I thought it was my debit card out of my pocket, but it was my driver's license. And I was joking. I'm like, yeah, let me see if I can scan my, my driver's license. I said, can you just give me a minute? I'm going to run out of my car and get my debit card. And the lady behind me said, oh, no, don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry about it. And I looked at her. I said, what do you mean? I said, I'm just going to run out here and get my debit card so I can pay for these two items and I'll be out of your way. She goes, no, honey, I got it. I will pay for your two items. And I was just like blown away. And I just hugged her. I said, thank you so much. God bless you. I said, you, you're going to make me want to cry because I want her to see what a blessing she was being. She said, you have a blessed day. And I noticed people in the store were watching and it was touching them. So uh, the thing, the two things I went in there, the Lord gave them to me. And he, he's going to bless that woman because the Bible says when you give to a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And I am a prophet of God, but I'm also a child of God. I'm, and you receive a righteous person's reward when you give to a righteous person. So I left there saying, God, thank you. You know, give her a prophet's reward. Bless her. And so today I stopped to get gas um, at the Circle K. And I went in there and got just a small drink because I was really thirsty. And all of a sudden, it just about brought tears to my eyes. It was the same Circle K that this happened in. And the Lord brought it back to me and he showed me. And I don't go around telling people what I do. I don't brag about it because the Lord says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But the Lord reminded me of when someone was sitting out front and they were hot and they asked me for money. And I said, I don't have any money, but I'll buy you a cold drink if you'd like one. And he said, okay. And he came in. It was a young, he just looked like a young teenage boy. And he just, it, it broke my heart. So I bought him a drink from the fountain. And the Lord said to me, he said, see, you sowed a drink and you not only got more of a drink, but you got something else. So that's the way you cast bread upon the, and again, I give God the glory. I don't tell people what I do because that's between me and the Lord. But, um, and that's a lot of people like to, that's what the Pharisees did in the Bible. They would sound a trumpet before them. So look at me, look at me, I'm giving and I'm praying and look how, look how great I am with my big hat, and my robe. You're supposed to be quiet and humble and keep that between you and the Lord, just like fasting and things that you do, you know, things you pray in secret. Um, I mean, it's okay if you tell people, hey, I've been praying for you and I'm glad to see you're getting better and but um, anyways, so those of you who are listening to this message, God said to tell you that he has seen your giving and your lending to those in need. And he said, You're do you have done it unto him. He said, everything you did, you did it for him and you put it straight in his hands. And now he's going to start paying you back because you've been doing it for a long time or you've been doing it for a while, never expecting anything in return. And he said, you have hidden bread. You have sources of money, blessings. I see refund checks come in, rebate checks, inheritances, money that's been owed to you for a long time. Um, somebody sold some land in the family and it should have come to you. Um, stock should have come to you. And I keep hearing inheritances. So some of you have had inheritances stolen from you. And the Lord said he's about to re return it to you he said tell you the devil is not going to get over on you because you're his and you belong to jesus christ and he's going to bless you and the last thing that he took me to now this is about salvation and when you know a sinner repents or when someone is lost and jesus leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one that's hidden you know got lost in the woods and there's a picture that i just love that's out right now and it shows a little baby sheep and he's scared and G you can see jesus running in the background coming to get him i just adore that picture but it's luke chapter 15 verses 8 through 10 it said, or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? She will call in her friends and neighbors and say, rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. Woohoo! Guys, I found my, you know, my silver coin that my grandpa gave me. Come on, let's get, let's party. In the same way... There is joy in the presence of God's angels when one sinner repents. So those of you, you have been sowing seed for loved ones, for their salvation, for their restoration, for their healing, for their marriages. 
And God said, you've been looking here and fro just constantly. You've not only been looking for your, your blessings, but you've been looking very intently in the word for something else to pray over them. And you've been watching for the Lord to move in their lives. And I'm going to tell you something. Sacrifice and seed is very powerful, not only in the face, but in the nostrils of God, because he smells sacrifice and fire falls on sacrifice. I heard a pastor say recently, and that is so true. For all the sacrifices you have made, for all the times you have done without so others could have, for all the times you gave up your last drink or meal so someone else could eat, God said you have done it unto him. And you have hidden bread. You have hidden loaves of bread in the freezer. You have them everywhere. And I, what I see is going to happen, you're also going to like go through old purses and you're going to find a 20 you might have forgotten about or you're going to get in your vehicle and there's going to be a $50 bill under your seat. And you're going to wonder how that happened. God's going to start blessing you. And he's going to send not only angels to bless you, but say, hey, if the angels can feed Gideon and they could feed Elijah, they can feed us. But he's also going to send it through companies, through the mail. You know, you've cast your bread upon the waters. And the Lord said it's been many days. And now it is your time of need. And there is a time of need going on right now for a lot of people with finances, with the economy, with the price of food. And the Lord said he's been saving up some of your harvest for when you need it the most. And those of you, you really need it right now. You need God to break through for you. And he said to tell you that your harvest is here. Just receive it. I I'm so happy for you. I cannot wait. Please tell me, testify and send me. Let me know when it happens for you. You can, you know, send me a message through this YouTube channel. You can DM me. I'm on Facebook under Kathy Rowell Williams. You can send it to me there. And again, that's Ecclesiastes 11.1. 1. Cast your bread upon the waters. Waters, plural. For after many days you will find it again. Give portions to seven, yes, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land or in your life. If clouds are full of water, they pour, pour rain down upon the earth. And the other thing he gave me right before I sat down to start recording this was, he said it was multi-grain bread, Kathy. So I, he said, look up multi and look up grain. So multi, of course, means many or more than one. You're going to have many and more than one blessings and loaves of bread, and that, that that represents not only, you know, man shall not live by alone, by bread, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. But bread also represents, you know, abundance and food, and, um, you know, they were always cooking bread. And bread to me is a very, uh, to me it's a comfort food. It's a nourishing, especially yeast bread. I just love it. So multi means many or more than one. Grain is crops, food or a single grain or seed. And you know, when you think about grain, you think about the harvest and the wheat. The wheat, you know, also represents the kingdom of heaven. The bad wheat or the bad, you know, the tares or the weeds, God's gonna cut down and throw it in the fire. But the, the good wheat, which is us, the kingdom of heaven is gonna continue to grow and bear fruit or the branches that we are because Jesus is the branch and we are the additional branches grafted in the vine through him. So I am thanking God. I receive this word for myself, too. I, you know, anytime I give a word, I claim it for myself as well and my family. So please do claim this word not only for yourself, but for your family. And I claim it for friends, people connected to me. I always say, Lord, everyone connected to me, past, present, and future. Let this word come in their life and let them have the blessing that I've been able to get from it. So share this with anybody that you know that is going through a hard time right now, a financial hard time. Maybe they've lost a lot of things. They've gone through a divorce or they've lost someone. And encourage them with this word. And this word gets out into the algorithm, but it gets up into the heavenlies where it does warfare to set the captives free. So that's Ecclesiastes 11.1. Psalm 41 1. I'll put it in the description. Please read these in your spare time. Proverbs 19 17 and Luke 15 8 through 10. So be blessed in all you do. If you feel led to sow into this word, please by all means do it. I promise you, you'll reap a harvest you can't contain. And I love you guys and 
Um, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so the next time I upload a word from God, you can receive it in due time and you can listen to it as many times as you want and then share it with those that you know um, need a blessing or need a word from God. So I love you guys. Thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing. And I continue to pray for each and every one of you every day and do battle over you. And if you ever need prayer, just let me know, leave a message in the comments, or you can personal message me, um, either here on Instagram or on Facebook. Well, actually I'm on Instagram too, but Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. So God bless you. And I love you guys with Jesus's big heart and love. Have a good day.